Hi guys, Nada here and today I'm going to talk about the brand new laptop from MSI. So this is the Alpha 15. Now this is actually a very interesting laptop because this is the first and as far as I know the only laptop that uses Radeon RX 5500 mobile GPU. It also comes with Ryzen 7 3750H CPU, so this is pretty much the first full AMD gaming laptop that we've seen in a very long while. Now, that sounds really nice, but at the end of the day what matters is how it performs and what you should expect if you are considering buying it. So we're gonna put it to the test and do some gaming, some benchmarks, and see what MSI has built around these specs. Uh, this laptop costs 1100 US dollars or 1150 euros here in the Netherlands. And that is assuming we're gonna go for specs like these. So this is with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, and a 144 hertz IPS panel. So let's see how this laptop performs. Let's go. This video is brought to you by the Riotoro Morpheus, a modular dual chamber case that features mesh steel panels on every single side so you can easily keep any high-end rig nice and cool. It also comes with two fast type C ports, extensive RGB controls and did I mention you can build it in two different sizes? Check it out using the links in the description below. Now as the price suggests, uh, the Alpha 15 is supposed to be an entry-level gaming laptop so you shouldn't expect it to be the lightest or the thinnest machine but it's also not extremely thick or heavy and it has a decent feel to it. It's mostly made of plastic, which is fine, with a thin layer of metal on the top to help make it feel a bit more impressive. Now build quality is acceptable overall and on par with what we should expect. What is disappointing however is that the Alpha 15 logo already came loose on our unit after just using it for a single day, so let's hope and assume that that's just a sample specific thing. The hinges feel fine and so does the panel when you open it, so there are no complaints there. On the left side we see two audio jacks, a USB Type-C port, a USB Type-A port, a mini display port and an HDMI port. On the right side we see an SD card reader and two more USB Type-A ports, which are actually really close to the user, which makes them a bit awkward if you use a mouse. Unfortunately, all USB ports are 3.2 Gen 1, so you are limited to 5 gigabits per second on each port, and you don't get Thunderbolt either. Uh, still, overall port count should be more than enough for most people out there. On the inside, the Alpha 15 is mostly plastic, but it actually feels sturdy and much better than the Asus FX505, for example. The matte gray does make it look and feel a bit old school, but I personally don't think that's a bad thing, and it doesn't scream gaming in your face. Because it is quite sturdy, the keyboard experience is actually pretty good. Key travel is a bit short, but the tactile feel is completely fine. And the Steel Series RGB Lightning is very nice too. Now, unfortunately, the touchpad isn't that great. It is a typical and logical area for MSI to save a bit, as gamers will buy a mouse anyways. But coming from a precision touchpad myself, the accuracy is pretty disappointing. Now typically we see manufacturers save money on the display as well when they make cheaper gaming laptops like this, but the 144Hz Full HD IPS display that MSI has put in here is actually quite nice. It is a 3 millisecond response panel and while there is a tiny bit of motion blur as expected, it does feel fast and it's a big speed upgrade over the 60Hz options in many other gaming laptops. It is also a free sync panel, so there is no tearing in games, which is again a very nice bonus. Since this is an IPS panel, color accuracy is actually good as well. The gamma setting is accurate, and while the white balance is a bit on the cold side, I don't think that's something that will bother most people. Peak brightness of the display is 317 nits, which could have been a bit brighter, but that's pretty typical even for more expensive gaming notebooks. Now the speakers on the Alpha 15 are, well, fine I guess. They go loud enough and they're not super cringy, which is about as much as you can hope for. And the 720p webcam is as expected fine for the incidental meeting, just don't expect miracles from it. And now we get to the tricky part for AMD and MSI, because the quad-core AMD Radeon 7 3750H, which is actually a Zen Plus CPU and not a Zen 2 CPU, is actually not that strong. Looking at CPU benchmarks, it's really trailing behind recent Intel CPUs and lies closer to the Intel i7-7700HQ from a couple of years ago. 
Now it's not bad and it's still fine for most tasks like uh, photo editing or some light video editing, but recent Intels have given us more cores and more importantly, significantly faster cores, making the 3750H feel very much last gen. Now the biggest issue here is that that affects gaming performance as well and that is pretty much the main reason why you would go for a laptop like this. When we look at 3D Mark, we can see that the RX 5500M in this machine has a lot of pure graphics power in theory. It's not actually that far behind the GTX 1660 Ti or even RTX 2060 and has a lot more power than the 1650. But in game benchmarks, it doesn't seem to really live up to that potential. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a great example actually, where we can see the CPU really being the bottleneck here as the MSI Prestige 15 with only a GTX 1650 actually puts out better results on Full HD Medium and the Alpha 15 is struggling. So basically your actual gaming experience with this machine will vary a lot depending on the games you play. It's not really bad for games like Overwatch, Fortnite, CSGO and they will run comfortably, even pushing the limits of this 144Hz panel. And actually many AAA titles should run comfortably around 60fps if you accept medium or high settings. But you need to know that not every big title will run smoothly on this machine, especially the ones that really benefit from having faster CPU cores. Now I have to point out that you cannot really buy a 144Hz GTX 1660 Ti laptop with an Intel Core i7 for this money. But if you do have the budget, you will probably want to consider it. So I have to admit I was expecting a bit more from this laptop. Now, MSI manages to keep the thermals nicely in check thanks to some nice heat pipes and a nearly completely ventilated bottom. While gaming, the GPU rarely gets warmer than 60 degrees Celsius and the CPU typically stays around 70. The fans, while quiet in idle, will become audible in gaming, but they're not overly loud either. Still, those are pretty nice numbers, making me wonder if they couldn't have pushed for higher clocks on both CPU and GPU. The Alpha 15 is very easy to open and maintain. Just removing the bottom cover gives you access to the fans to clean them, to uh, both memory modules, to the uh, M2 SSD, and there's also space for one more 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive. Uh, there is a Wi-Fi chip and the battery is actually very easy to replace as well. Now, as you can see, the battery is fairly small and as a result of that, the battery life of the Alpha 15 isn't that great. Just under three hours of mixed usage in PC Mark 8 in eco mode with a screen set only to 150 nits. Now you can stretch it to around four hours in light tasks and by lowering the brightness even more, but this is not a machine for a full day of work or studies. So that about covers it for the Alpha 15. I have to say it's a very interesting combination of some obvious cost cutting measures on one hand, like the cheaper touchpad and a mediocre battery life, as well as a simple housing and some really good parts on the other hand, like the keyboard is very nice uh, and it's very easy to open and maintain and upgrade. And I have to say the IPS panel on this thing is actually fantastic. It's much more that you would expect to see on a gaming laptop in this price range and even higher. Now, this is a very capable machine overall, but it's also a very reasonable entry-level gaming laptop. I do have to say I'm a bit disappointed with this combination of the GPU and the CPU because the CPU is obviously bottlenecking the GPU and I'm left wondering what would GPU do if it was paired with the newest generation of Intel CPUs, for example, that offer more cores and higher clock speed. Because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that people will get more excited and hyped about having every game run flawlessly and not having a laptop with a first 7 nanometer GPU or a full AMD laptop. Though I have to say it might be an interesting buy now that the holiday season is here and the Black Friday is coming up, so if the price comes a bit down, this is something that you should definitely keep an eye out for. Now. At the end of the day, I just want to tell you that you should know the limitations of this laptop and you actually get what you paid for. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this laptop and about this review. Don't forget to subscribe, give me thumbs up and see you in the next one. Bye!